Hi everyone, welcome to episode 9. So uh, what we're going to be looking at today is how we can spawn in a given number of obstacles at sort of random tiles in our map. Uh, the easiest way to do this, of course, would just to be to loop through the number of obstacles that we want to spawn in, and uh, with each iteration in the loop, just get a random x and y coordinate to spawn the obstacle at. Now, uh, one problem with this, of course, could be that uh, we get two random coordinates that by chance are the same, and then we end up spawning one obstacle on top of the other, which isn't really ideal. So uh, we can get around this problem by instead uh, creating an array of all of the coordinates in our map, and then performing a random shuffle on that array, and then just taking the first however many coordinates out of that array as our random obstacle points. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, the shuffle method that we'll, that we'll use is called Fisher-Yates, and uh, we're going to have a quick look at that now. So this method of shuffling is nice and simple. Uh, to demonstrate it quickly, I'm just going to draw four cards labeled A, B, C, and D. And if these were in an array, then they would of course be indexed as 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now we want to loop through all the cards in our deck. So uh, we'll first have I equals 0, then I equals 1, I equals 2, and finally I equals 3. So now if we call n the number of cards in our deck, so in this case 4, at each step in the loop we're going to get a random number somewhere between i inclusive and n exclusive. So for i equals 0, that will be a random number between 0 and 4, meaning that the possible random numbers we could get from that would be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Let's say it gives us the random number 1, now we swap element i with our random element, so we swap 0 with 1, and we get a deck that's now arranged b, a, c, d. Then we can do the same thing with i equals 1, so we get a random number between 1 and 4, let's say it gives us 3, then we swap uh, the a with the d to get b, d, c, a. So as you can probably see, what's happening here is that each time we pick a random card to shuffle, it gets moved to the left side of the array so that it doesn't get chosen again. So just to finish this off, uh, let's look at the third iteration of our loop when i equals 2. So we get a random number between 2 and 4. Let's say that's equal to 3. So now we swap a and c, and we get the array b, d, a, c. Now in our final iteration, when i equals 3, you can see that our random number will be from 3 to 4, and uh, because it's 4 exclusive, the only random number we can get is 3, which means we'd be swapping element 3 with element 3, which uh, doesn't change anything. So for this reason, we can always ignore the last iteration. So a shuffle method like this can be useful in a number of cases. Um, it's not really limited to our map generator class. So I'm going to create a new C Sharp script uh, called something like utility. And uh, we can just put all methods that are just sort of generally helpful across our entire project in there. So uh, this is going to be a public static class so that we can easily access the methods inside of it. And uh, it doesn't need to extend from mono behavior and it uh, doesn't need to use Unity Engine either. So we want our shuffle method to be public and static, and we want it to return the shuffled array, but we don't know what type of array it is, so we can just use this uh, sort of unspecified generic type T. So we want an array of T objects, and uh, we can give the method a name, shuffle array, and we say that it takes in type T. And then uh, for the parameters, we want to give it our unshuffled array. So that will be the array of type T, called array. And uh, we might also want to give it a seed so that uh, we could make it always shuffle an array in the same order. So int seed. All right, let's create a system.random object. We can call this our pseudo random number generator. This is equal to a new system.random object, and we can give it an integer seed, so that's great. Pass in seed. Now uh, we want to do that for loop, going through all the elements in our array. So for int i equals 0, i less than array.length minus 1. Remember, minus 1, because the last uh, iteration of the loop we can discard, as we, uh, as we looked at earlier i increments by 1, and we can say integer 
our random index is equal to, and we say pseudo random number generator dot next. So we can give it a minimum and a maximum value. So following the algorithm, that will be i and n, the length of our array, so array dot length. And now we want to swap element i with our random element. So uh, we first need to store one of them so it doesn't get overwritten. So we can say t, and we can call this our temporary item, is equal to, and uh, from the array, we can get our random index item. And then we can say, all right, the array at the random index is now equal to the array at i. And finally, the array at i is equal to the temporary item. All right, so finally, all we have to do is return our now shuffled array. So very, very simple algorithm, very nice. Um, let's go into the map generator class. And I want to start off by generating all the coordinates for the tiles in the map. So uh, a coordinate is just representing an integer x and an integer y value. So down here, let's quickly create a public struct uh, coordinate, okay, with a public int x and a public int y. And we can quickly make a constructor for this public coordinate uh, takes in underscore x underscore y and we can assign those quickly x equals underscore x and likewise y equals underscore y. All right, so now we want to store all of the coordinates for the tiles in our map in a list. So we're going to have to say using system.collections.generic and we can create over here a list of coordinates which we can call all tile cohorts and at the top of our generate map method we can say all tile cohorts equals a new list of coordinates and uh, we want to uh, loop through all of the tiles so let's just copy this loop quickly and uh, we can say all tile cohorts dot add and uh, we can add a new cohort with a value of x and y all right, so now we want to create a new variable to store the shuffled coordinates. Um, we could use a list for this as well, but I'm going to use a queue instead, and you'll see why this uh, makes some sense in a moment. So queue of coordinates, we can call this shuffled tile cohorts. All right, and at the bottom here, we can just say shuffle tile cohorts equals new queue of cohorts. And uh, this can take in a i enumerable collection of coordinates. So uh, we can just pass in utility dot shuffle array. And into that, we'll pass our uh, all tile coordinates list, which we need to convert to an array uh, because shuffle array takes an array, of course. Um, OK, so now we've got a shuffled queue of coordinates. We can create a public uh, coordinate method, which we can call get random coordinate. And all we need to do to get the random to get a random coordinate now is to just return the next item in the queue. So we can say coordinate uh, random coord is equal to the uh, the shuffled tile coordinate queue dot dq to get the first item out of it and then uh, we want to add that random coordinate back onto the end of the queue so we can just say shuffle tile coordinates dot nq random coordinate and then we just return our random coordinate okay so after we've uh, after we've created all the tiles here Let's um, let's specify a number of obstacles to spawn in. So say int obstacle count equals maybe 10. All right, so we want to loop through all of those for int i equals zero, i less than obstacle count, i incrementing by one each time. Um, we want to now say coord random coord equals get random coord. Okay, now we want to convert this coordinate to an actual vector 3 in our game world. 
And of course, we want to use the same conversion that we have over here. Um, it would be a bit redundant to sort of type that out again over here. So rather what I'm going to do is create a method, a, um, a vector3 method called something like coord to position, which can take in an integer x and an integer y. And it just returns this conversion over here. So I'll cut that. You can say um, return that. And now over here we say tile position is equal to coord to position, and we pass in the x and the y. All right. You can do the same thing over here. We can say vector three coord, uh, no, rather obstacle position is equal to coord to position, and we pass in random coord dot x and random coord dot y. And now we want to actually instantiate our obstacle. So uh, let's let's go up here and make a obstacle prefab public transform obstacle prefab. Okay, and we can say transform a new obstacle is equal to instantiate our prefab for the position. We of course give it obstacle position. Doesn't need any rotation, so quaternion dot identity and we want to cast that as a transform. So that should be more or less working. Let's save and go into Unity. Got some errors. Um, the first one is that our, our shuffle array method takes in a seed as well as the array. So uh, over here, just make an integer. Let me actually make this public. Public int seed. Maybe give that a default value of 10 for whatever reason and we can say uh, pass in the seed over here all right do we have any other errors nope that's it let's create a cube for our obstacle I'm going to give that um, the obstacle material you can just remove the well actually I won't I'll leave the box collider on there and I'm going to rename this to obstacle Add that as a prefab. While I'm here, I think I forgot to add the um, the ground material to my tile. Let me do that quickly. I'll go into the mesh render renderer, uh, open up materials, click on here, and uh, click on my ground material. So that now, if I change this, well, it won't update now. But if we go on to our map, there we go. Um, okay, so it's saying the thing you want to instantiate is null because we haven't um, we haven't assigned our obstacle yet. Let's do that. I'll delete the obstacle prefab from the scene and drag that in there. And okay, we're getting uh, well. Okay, <laughs> as you can see, it's um it's spawning tons of them because uh, it's not being destroyed as it should be um, because we haven't uh, added it as a child to our map holder. So we can say new obstacle dot parent is equal to map holder. All right. Um, now we're just going to have to manually delete all of these because it's not going to do it automatically. Uh, okay. And I don't actually want my my ground tiles to be red. That was just to <laughs> just to demonstrate. So let me turn that back to white and let's go. And also just clear the error there. Okay, so it is spawning in these tiles, uh, I mean these obstacles at random positions, so that's nice. If we change the seed, uh, you should see that we get different positions, so that's pretty cool. Um, it, is, uh, it is spawning them below, uh, well it, it's spawning them right in the center uh, of the ground plane, so let's, let's just shift them up quickly uh, by a half. Um, so for the obstacle position we can just plus vector three dot up multiplied by a half. And that should solve that. Only it hasn't for some, oh, okay. <laughs> there we go, now it has. Cool, very nice. Um, yeah, so in the next episode, we'll be looking at uh, at how we can make it so that these 
These obstacles never sort of cut off a section of the map to render it inaccessible. So, see you then. Cheers.